The president of the Christian Association of Nigeria, Archbishop Daniel Oko, has said the fears that the forthcoming 2023 general elections may be truncated by worsening insecurity are yet to disappear despite assurances from the security agencies and the federal government that the elections will hold as planned. According to Oko, this has necessitated the Christian body to hold a national day of prayer to seek the face of God and a divine intervention for the country to witness peaceful elections in 2023. Oko at the prayer session acknowledged that it's a trying time for the country, but the people must not lose hope. Joining us now is the former presidential candidate of the defunct Fresh Democratic Party, Pastor Chris Okoche, to speak on the 2023 polls, calls for the formation of a national government and the fears that elections may be truncated by insecurity. Great to have you on UC. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. As you can see, I'm dressed in this oriental apparel. So my salutation is in day one. I ain't got the hey. just conveying <laughs> salutations and, and, and greetings to you. Thank you so much, sir. You're welcome to the program. All right. Now, political campaigns have begun in earnest, and of course, politicians are out and about making promises. Some have released their manifestos, and without mentioning names, I would just like to know if you are optimistic, you know, about the 2023 elections. Are you optimistic that Nigeria will get it right in 2023, looking at the crop of candidates that we have? Not at all. I've said it very clearly that this whole exercise is a journey in futility. The political or governmental incapacity of Nigeria has never been modality, which is requisite knowledge and procedure. How they will do what? Our problem is predicated on what I call conditionality, the inherent conditional obstructions within the constitution. So when you listen to the flag bearers, they're always talking about modality, what they can do and how they intend to do it without understanding that as long as the constitution is the way it is, which is already moribund, as long as the constitution is, is anti-federalism, there is nothing that they can do. They cannot carry these programs or these manifesto to their logical conclusions. So I would say that the right thing to do is to put the kibosh on it, that is stop this entire process and get into an interim co government, fix the necessary things that need to be fixed, and then we can get on with governance. Pastor Chris, as I put away my dictionary to look up some of the words that you've thrown our way, let me ask you this. In <laughs> our particularly ethnically polarized climate that Nigeria finds itself, do you foresee that these elections might be a little more tense than the ones previously? As we do know that the three major parties uh, have three candidates from the vice president to the presidential candidates that represent the three major ethnic groups within our country. Do you see this being uh, a bit more of a polarized situation than before? And how do you think that our electoral bodies will be able to handle this uh, come February? Well, I have made it abundantly clear that Number one, INEC is what is called a Congo. That's a Q U A N G O. A Congo is a is an organization set up by government to oversee an area of public interest and to develop it and get its remuneration from government. And to that extent, INEC cannot be independent. It is mere terminological inexactitude. It's not true. So if we're talking about INEC as an independent body, that is still very questionable. Then you go to the, quest, the issue of ethnicity. We've been here before. We've been here before. We're just kind of parambulating in the wilderness of retrogression and even stagnation. What we must do, I have already stated very clearly, we must get to the root of the matter, not a government of ad, ad hocism, where you're trying to fix something momentarily or temporarily. We've got to do this pathologically so that we can erase the inherent problems within the constitution, within the polity, and leadership can then take off. 
And as long as we, we go back the same route, we're just going to end up the same way we've ended before, which is achieving nothing and just corroborating status quo. My take on this is pretty simple. Now, I, I heard in, in the preamble to the, to the news uh, what um, one of my senior colleagues had said about insecurity. There is no doubt about the fact that insecurity has metabolized into some kind of gargantuan monstrosity and creating the ambience of fear, trepidation in the hearts of the Nigerian people. And as long as you have that kind of prevailing circumstance, the elections cannot work. They will not hold. So I, 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 without being pessimistic, I think it's just been realistic to say that I do not see 2023 um, elections taking place. And I'm all for that because, like I said before, we need to get into an interim government. That's the only way forward. Well, Pastor Chris, thank you so much for that response. I have to apologize. We have to briefly cut the interview. And